All right, good afternoon. On Syria, our humanitarian colleagues tell us they're deeply concerned by unconfirmed reports of a high number of civilians killed by airstrike in Raqqa City over the last 24 hours. Yesterday, unconfirmed reports indicate that over 30 people were reportedly killed in the As As Al Sakini neighborhood, while eight internally displaced people from the same family were killed in a separate attack in another part of the city. These attacks, if confirmed, are a shocking reminder that civilians continue to bear the brunt of the conflict in many parts of Syria. In recent days and weeks, scores of civilians have reportedly been killed and injured in Raqqa due to airstrikes and shelling, and up to 25,000 people remain trapped in the city. The UN condemns any attack that is directed against civilians or civilian infrastructure. We urge all parties fighting in Raqqa and across Syria to take every possible measure to spare and protect civilians and civilian infrastructure as in line with their obligations under international humanitarian law. And turning to Iraq, uh, we are told that civilians continue to flee Iraq's Telafar as military operations retake the town where up to 30,000 civilians are trapped by the fighting. Humanitarian assistance is being provided at assembly points to the south and east of the town, with more than 300 people having passed through these points yesterday and who are now receiving assistance. UNHCR has received some 1,500 families at a transit center southeast of Mosul and is finalizing preparations to host up to 6,000 people at another camp. UNHCR is also managing a camp in Nimrud, which will all be able to receive up to 22,000 people fleeing from Tel Afar. And the agency said it fears that Iraqi civilians are likely to be held as used, excuse me, are likely to be used as human shields again, and that attempts to flee could result in executions and shootings. It calls on all the parties to the conflict to allow civilians to leave the conflict area and to allow uh, to access safety. For its part, uh, the World Health Organization and its partners are working with Iraqi health authorities to set up mobile medical clinics to provide life-saving emergency and primary health care services to those fleeing Tel Afar. And also on Iraq, the Human Rights Office and the UN Mission in uh, the UN Mission in Iraq, UNAMI, today jointly urged the Iraqi government to ensure that the thousands of women and girls who survived rape and other forms of sexual violence by Daesh fighters receive care, protection, and justice. They also stress that children born as a result of such violence do not face a life of discrimination and abuse. Uh, the new joint report said the Iraqi government is obliged under do in domestic law and international human rights law to ensure that all victims have access to justice and reparation. Back here, the Assistant Secretary General for Political Affairs, Miroslav Yencha, uh, briefed the Security Council on the situation in the Middle East today. He noted that the recent crisis in Jerusalem had once again highlighted the unsustainability of the current situation, as well as the need for political horizon and a clear recommitment by the international community and both parties to ending the occupation and realizing a two-state solution. Mr. Yensha also said that in a few days' times, we will mark the third anniversary of the ceasefire that ended the latest round of hostilities between Hamas and Israel in Gaza in 2014. He added that since then, the overall humanitarian conditions in Gaza have worsened, with the uh, punishing measures taken against Gaza by the pa Palestinian Authority since April that only add to the crippling humanitarian effect of the population of Israel's on the population because of Israel's closures. Mr. Yancho called on the Palestinian leaders to address the destructive consequences of these divisions. Full uh, statement is in our office. And UNICEF said today it is extremely concerned about an appalling increase in the use of children, especially girls, as so-called human bombs in northeast Nigeria. Since the beginning of 2017, 83 children have been used as human bombs, including 55 girls, most of them under 15 years old. This is already four times more than for all of last year. The agency said that children used as human bombs were all above all victims and, of course, not perpetrators. Boko Haram has sometimes but not always claimed responsibility for those attacks. According to UNICEF, the use of children in such attacks has a further impact of creating suspicion and fear of children released, rescued, or escaped from the clutches of Boko Haram. 
And our humanitarian colleagues tell us the situation in Ethiopia remains concerning, especially in the Somali region, where successive failed rains have exacerbated the already critical food security situation. Extraordinary measures are required to address the ongoing crisis. So far, the fifth round of food distribution has reached 330,000 of the three po targeted 3.3 million people in the Somali region. The ongoing distribution are expected to be completed by mid-September. Uh, more information online. Oh, so just to flag that the Central Emergency Relief Fund has just released $10 million to support these efforts, but fundraising continues to remain, uh, con efforts continue for the remaining $6 million that are needed for the program. And the Human Rights Office today welcomed the news that former UN employee Erkan Musaif has been released by the Uzbek authorities 11 years after he was arrested at Tashkent Airport while traveling to a regional seminar. Mr. Musaif, who is the country manager for a joint UNDP-EU program, was tried on three separate charges in 2006-07 and received sentences of 15, 6, and 14 in four years, uh, respectively. Uh, the current High Commissioner, Zaid Rad Al Hussein, raised uh, Mr. Musaif's case in a meeting with the President of uh, Uzbekistan when he made the first ever visit to Uzbekistan by High Commissioner for Human Rights in May of this year. And I want to flag that tomorrow is the International Day for the Remembrance of the Slave Trade and its Abolition. The day seeks to reflect on history in order to shed a light on the fight against all forms of oppression and racism today. In her message for the day, uh, the UNESCO Director General Irena Bokova said that ignorance is our enemy. Everyone must know the scale and the crime of the slave trade, the million of lives that were broken and the impact on the fate of the continents up to this very day. Everyone must be fully informed of the struggle that led to its abolition so that together we can build societies that are fair and thus freer. The day is observed on the anniversary of the 1791 insurrection of enslaved men and women in the western part of what was then the island of, of what is the island of Santo Domingo, which led to the creation and independence of what is now Haiti. And on that note, I will stop and take your questions. Mr. Klein. Yes. Um, does the Secretary General or would the Secretary General have any comment on President Trump's um, speech last night in which he outlined a uh, uh, somewhat more aggressive strategy both militarily and also diplomatically um, in Afghanistan and, and Pakistan? And is, will there be any consideration of Lending the good, uh, providing the good offices of the uh, Secretary General uh, or any delegate uh, uh, to participate or help facilitate the, on the diplomatic side with Pakistan uh, in, in terms of ending sanctuaries for terrorists? Uh, on uh, on the President's speech, I think for for the Secretary General, I think our, our, what we want to stress is our hope. Uh, that the international community will help uh, come together and help Afghanistan find a political solution that will bring peace uh, to the country. And that's through also obviously through the support and efforts of the UN, of the UN, mission, uh, of the UN mission there. On, on the second part of your question, I mean, as a matter of principle, Secretary General's good offices are always available to any two parties who, who ask, uh, but that's, that's just a, uh, that's a statement of, uh, of principle. Uh, our focus is on finding a political solution to the current crisis uh, in Afghanistan and help uh, the, Afghan, uh, the Afghan people uh, who have suffered so much uh, for decades. Whitney. Steph, um, Iran said today that it can resume production of uh, highly enriched uranium within five days if the U.S. pulls out of the nuclear deal. How concerned is the Secretary General that this deal could fall apart? For the Secretary General, the, the so-called uh, Iran nuclear deal is one of the most important uh, diplomatic achievements in our search for uh, for peace and stability, and I think it's uh, everyone involved needs to do its utmost uh, to protect and support that agreement. Matthew, I wanted to ask you about um, in South Sudan. It's said that the government is uh, not letting UN planes uh, use the the Juba Airport due to a disagreement about 
the UN's role in running the airport? Is that the case? And, and is it in any way hindering the deployment of the, the new forces? The, the my, my understanding is that uh, that issue has been, uh, has been resolved, the issue of the uh, – uh, the issue of the airport. The mission's flights uh, resumed yesterday after having been uh, temporarily grounded uh, due to the non-issuance of uh, security clearances. And so it's, it's resolved meaning that the UN has no role in running the airport? What? The, the, the U, it's resolved in the sense that uh, the, UN, uh, the UN is receiving the, the flight <coughs> clearances. Uh, we obviously uh, apply for flight clearances to the Sudan, South Sudanese authorities, as we would do. It's, we don't control the airspace. It's a sovereign state. Uh, we, like anyone else, need to get uh, flight clearances. Uh, so the whatever issue ha that existed has now been resolved. And, and I want to ask you on uh, yesterday. I'd asked you about this crackdown in Togo, where, and I wanted to know whether you said that you, you know you were looking for something, or the UN was no, monitoring. I, I, How many people that do you think were killed in it? And are there any? There have been some people have called for people to flee to Ghana and other nearby I countries. I don't. I wish I had something for you, but I don't have anything on Togo for you today. Yes, sir. Um, there are reports out that uh, the Human Rights Council is planning on publishing a blacklist of companies doing business in Israeli settlements. I just wondered if the Secretary General thinks it's, if he agrees with that, if he thinks it's productive to publish blacklists of companies. Uh, my understanding of that issue, uh, the, is the the list is still being uh, is under is still being reviewed. It's an issue for for member states to deal with at this point. Mr. Lee, sure. I wanted to ask you about Libya. Um, there have been it's been some days now that the former Prime Minister Ali Zaidan is said to be uh, held hostage, taken hostage. Since it's a he's a person that the UN mm -hmm. was dealing with. I wanted to know if the UN, if the mission, Mr. Salome or others are aware of it and what's being done about it. I, I'll check with the mission. Okay. Have another? Yeah, sure. We're okay. Thank you. Well, I, all right. I, I was going to ask you about killer robots, but I, I want to ask you about this instead. Uh, there's, a, there's an event this week in the General Assembly, um, uh, and it's, uh, some of the sponsors are those who attended the Macau event sponsored and paid for by Eng Lap Seng in August 2015, just before he was indicted and arrested. So I wanted to know, maybe you can find this out today. It said that it's going to be webcast. Um, but what's what, the event? I, I don't. The event the has event? to do with a, a, a sustainable tourism. It's uh, it's uh, funded by it's sponsored by a by a, a yes Chi Chinese NGO and two member states, both of whom went to Macau. And so I just my question to you is: You've said that things have you know uh, well, radically I, I, cleaned I, I, up. I said I would. What's the UN's I would, role I would, in the okay, event? I, What's the I UN's would, role in the event? Who's paying I, I for need the... To, so okay. give, drop me off a piece of paper with information about the event. I'm going to give you the email as well, the one about Perfect. Yipping Zoo and the one okay. that you said you hadn't right. seen. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.